There is no doubt that Michael Jordan's career created a fear that is unprecedented in any sport. Players who competed against him during the same period said that there was no one who was not afraid of him. Among the legendary names in basketball, Jordan was treated like a god. Jordan was more than just a basketball player. He was a true sports icon. His commercial success in sports proved that there was no one else who could come close to him in this field. These are the moments that elevated Michael Jordan and made him legendary. The hardest game of Jordan's life was the so-called flu game. This game was a moment that clearly defined who Jordan was. The night before Game 5 of the 1997 NBA Finals, Jordan fell ill. There were many rumors about his illness. Some claimed it was the flu, others that he had food poisoning from the food he ate. But that's not what I want to discuss. Jordan was definitely sick. Jordan started vomiting all over the curtains and the floor in his room. He was writhing on the floor waiting for the doctors to arrive. He said, I threw up so much that if vomiting was a sport, I would be the best in the world. I wasn't sure how sick he was, but I'm pretty sure I was the sickest player on the planet. Then, his fever started to rise. The vomiting and fever started at 2 a.m. and continued until game time the next day. Don't play today, his teammates told Jordan. Jordan knew he would refuse. Before the game started, rumors spread that Jordan was sick. Neither the opposing team nor the media knew if Jordan would play that day. Even when the roster was announced, there was uncertainty. After the players' names were called, Jordan's name was finally announced. The game was on. Jordan was dead in the first quarter. The Utah Jazz, playing with home court advantage, led by five points going into the fourth quarter. If Jordan couldn't beat the disease, he would be robbed of his second championship. Jordan sat in a chair at every timeout. By the end of the game, you could see in his face that he was completely exhausted. But still, he did his last duty for his team. In the last 25 seconds, he hit a crucial three-pointer with a collar to put his team ahead. And he he was carried onto the team bus and left the court with difficulty. Now all he had to do was to go home and rest in the comfort of being the best in history. In 1986, during the playoffs against the Boston Celtics, one of the top teams of the era, the Chicago Bulls, led by Michael Jordan, witnessed the beginning of an unforgettable story. Celtics veteran Danny Ainge and Jordan decided to play golf the day before the second game of the series. However, Jordan was not happy when he left the golf course because Danny had defeated him and made him a little angry. However, Jordan would realize the next day that getting angry was a mistake. Before leaving the golf course, Jordan turned to Danny and said, tell your son I have a surprise for him. What should Jordan do in that case? Look, either put it off to Jordan against Dennis Johnson. Jordan, Johnson trying to fight through it on a switch. Bird guards Jordan and Jordan. Jordan was actually targeting Boston's defensive player when he said those words. Danny, however, did not take these words seriously. The next day, Jordan delivered the same warning he had given to the opposing team the day before on Boston's court, scoring 63 points. Not only did he dominate the opposing team, but it was the most points scored in a game in NBA history. At just 23 years old, the young Jordan set an NBA record that still remains unbroken. Larry Bird, one of the legendary players of the Boston Celtics, said, I don't think he was Michael Jordan. It was God in disguise today. You wouldn't have believed such a performance against the Boston Celtics was possible. The best testament to Jordan's unbelievable ambition was the fact that he scored 42 of his 63 points against Danny Ainge, whom he defeated on the golf course. For him, no matter the game, no detail was unimportant, and he was always looking for an opportunity to get his revenge. Michael Jordan always found ways to show that he was superior and different. Although it may seem like a small detail in the grand scheme of his career, Jordan would sometimes shoot with his left hand to show his opponents that they were not on his level. During the 1985 season, in a game between the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons, Jordan drove inside and was fouled hard by an opposing player. Jordan stood up and walked towards his opponent, and suddenly, the whole court erupted. The fight wasn't just between the players. Chicago's coach walked up to the opposing coach. The coach, in short, stood behind his players. As a result, both coaches were ejected from the game. By the way, it was already the last moments of the game. Detroit players left the court without waiting for the game to end and without congratulating the other team. The last position of the game belonged to Jordan. Jordan said goodbye to the opponent, who left without shaking hands, with a free throw with his left hand, as if in jest. You may have thought that shooting with the opposite hand was simple for the greatest of all time, but nearly 33 years ago, Jordan made this shot with his eyes closed. He looked at Mutombo, the opposing player, and said, Hey Mutombo, this is for you. 
Jordan. Of course, Jordan's story with Mutombo didn't end there. Mutombo was known for blocking everyone in the game and wagging his finger after the block. The NBA later banned the finger wag, and that was the year Mutombo became known for it. One day, the two players met in the locker room. Messing with Jordan would usually cause players to run away without looking back, but Mutombo was not one to back down from a challenge. In the 1997 All-Star Game, Mutombo challenged Jordan and said, You can't beat for it, you haven't got me yet. And all Jordan said was, Don't even try it. But Mutombo kept going. No, you haven't got me in six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. Come the next year, Jordan taught Mutombo a lesson, and Jordan did something like this. Jordan and the Eiffel Tower. There is an interesting story behind this photo. After completing his first year in the NBA, Jordan toured Europe with the Nike brand. A few months before the Air Jordan would become the most iconic shoe of the future, Jordan flew to Italy after a friendly in Paris. Dressed in an orange and black jersey and matching shoes, Jordan impressed the crowd by scoring 30 points in the friendly. Towards the end of the game, Jordan's dunk in the orange jersey turned into the event that would give him his name. Jordan went up for the dunk, and with the force of the dunk, the entire basket shattered. The coach of the team described the moment this way. There was glass everywhere. The hoop exploded. I look at Jordan's eyes and ears, nothing. All the pieces of glass were stuck in the players of the opposing team. Even though we were scared, for Jordan, it was just a simple dunk, the coach said. After this impressive moment, the shoes Jordan wore in that game went on sale under the name Broken Photo. There may be thousands of shots in basketball, but only one goes down in history as the shot. This legendary shot was made by Michael Jordan in 1989 in Game 5 of the Eastern Conference between the Chicago Bulls and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Last 10 seconds of the game, Jordan made a critical shot that put his team up by one point. However, with six seconds left, the Cleveland Cavaliers had the ball for what was supposed to be the last possession. They successfully scored with an incredible layup to put the Chicago Bulls behind, and the score of the game was 199. Cheveland was only up by one point. With three seconds left in in the game, the Bulls called a timeout. The Bulls coach explained a tremendous plan to his team. Give the ball to Jordan and get around him. In the last three seconds, the Bulls pulled the ball off the rim and then the ball found Michael Jordan. Jordan hung in the air with a perfect shot over his opponent. To Jordan. Jordan to the circle, puts the shot in the air. Good! The game's over and the Bulls have won! Perhaps more iconic was Jordan's celebration after the shot. It silenced the entire court and sent the Chicago Bulls back into the series and out of the playoffs. Here is the name of this legendary shot, The Shot. We're going to New York, baby. Thank you very much for watching. I spent one week to make this video. Can you please like and subscribe to the video in return? Thanks again for watching.